Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using consistent deformation method. In this fixed beam, we have an eccentric point load W acting at a distance of A from the point A. The span of the beam is given as L. In this analysis, we are going to find the fixed end moments, reactions, and then we are going to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Now let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and moments are 4. They are MA, RA, MB and RB. The available equilibrium equations are 2. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 4 minus 2. We will get 2. From these 4, let us release MB and RB. You can see that in the point B, I have removed MB and RB. So the point B becomes a free end. Previously it was a fixed beam, but now it became a cantilever beam. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. For the reference, we can use this diagram. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. They are the vertical reaction RB and the moment MB. We are keeping them as the coordinates because we have removed them. Let us keep RB as the first coordinate. Let us keep it upwards. Let us keep the moment MB as the second coordinate. Let us keep it in the clockwise direction. Finally, if we get any negative value, we can change the directions. Now, let us see the formula to find the answers. If there is only one coordinate, we can use this formula. But in this problem, there are two coordinates. So, we can use this formula and make these two formulas. In the first coordinate, we have RB. So, P1 will be RB and in the second coordinate we have MB. So, P2 will be MB. Delta 1 and Delta 2 are the final displacements. Final displacements are the settlement or the rotations. In the beam, in the point B, there is no settlement or rotation. So, Delta 1 and Delta 2 will be 0. Finally, we will get these. Delta L is the displacement due to the loads. Here we have to find Delta 1L and Delta 2L. Delta is the displacement due to unit load or unit movement. Here we have Delta 11, Delta 12, Delta 21 and Delta 22. We know that our first coordinate is the vertical reaction RB. So the displacement Delta 11, Delta 21 and delta 1L will be the deflections. Our second coordinate is the movement MB. So delta 1, 2, delta 2, 2 and delta 2L will be the slope. All of these displacements should be found in the point B. Now in these two equations, let us find delta 1L and delta 2L. We know that delta 1L is the deflection due to the load and delta 2L is the slope due to the load. In a cantilever beam, if a point load is acting at a distance of A from the left side, the deflection in the free end is W A square upon 6 A into 3 L minus A and the slope theta is W A square by 2 E I. We know that delta 1L is the deflection, let us apply that, and delta 2L is the slope, let us apply that. Since the deflection occurs downwards, it will be negative and the slope will be positive. Now let us find delta 11 and delta 12. The values of delta 12 and delta 21 will be same. We will see that later. To find delta 11 and delta 12, we have to apply unit load in the first coordinate. Our first coordinate is RB. 
So in the direction of RB, we have to apply unit load. You can see that I have applied unit load in the direction of RB. Now let us find delta 11 and delta 12. We know that delta 11 is the deflection. If in the cantilever beam, if the point load is acting in the point B, the formula to find the deflection is WL cube upon 3EI. Here W is 1. So we will get L cube upon 3EI. The formula to find the slope theta is WL square upon 2EI. Here W is 1. So we will get L square upon 2EI. Here the deflection occurs upwards. So the deflection will be positive and the slope will be negative. Now let us find delta 21 and delta 22. For that we have to apply unit movement in the second coordinate. Our second coordinate is the MB. So we have to apply unit movement in the same direction of MB. So we have to apply the unit movement in the clockwise direction. You can see that I have applied unit movement in the point B. We know that delta 21 is the deflection and delta 22 is the slope. In the cantilever beam, if a coupled moment is acting in the free end, the formula to find the deflection is ML square upon 2EI. Here M is 1, so we will get L square upon 2EI. The formula to find the slope is ML upon EI. Here M is 1, so we will get L upon EI. We know that the deflection occurs downwards. So the deflection delta 21 will be negative and the slope delta 22 will be positive. In this equation, let us apply the values of delta 1L, delta 11 and delta 12. Negative into negative, it will be positive. From both of these, we can take L square upon EI outside. We can eliminate EI. We can take L square on the other side. It will come in the denominator. Then let us divide this equation by 2. When we do that, we will get this. Let us keep this equation as number 1. Now in this equation, let us apply the values of delta 2L, delta 21 and delta 22. From both of these, let us take L upon EI outside. Then we can eliminate EI and then we can take L on the other side. It will come in the denominator. Let us keep this equation as number 2. Now let us add the equation number 1 and 2. P2 can be eliminated. When we add these two, we will get L upon 6 P1. Let us add these two. From both of these, let us take W A square upon L outside. For these two terms, we can take LCM. 2 into 3L, we will get 6L. 3L into 2, we will get 6L. Minus A into 2, we will get minus 2A. 3L into minus 1, we will get minus 3L. 6L minus 3L, we will get 3L. 6L into L, we will get 6L square. We can eliminate 6. We can take L on the other side. So L into L square, we will get L cube. We know that L is A plus B. So 3 into A plus B, we will get 3A plus 3B. 3A minus 2A, we will get A. Finally, for P1, we are getting this. Now, in the second equation, let us apply the value of P1. We can eliminate L. Here it will be L square. Let us take this term on the other side. So it will come as positive. In these two terms, let us take W A square upon 2L outside. For these two terms, we can take LCM. L into minus 1, we will get minus L. 2L into L, we will get 2L square. We know that L is A plus B, so minus L is minus A minus B. We can eliminate A. 3B minus B, we will get 2B. We can eliminate 2. Finally, for P2, we are getting this. 
we know that P1 is Rb. For Rb, we have got W A square upon L cube into A plus 3B. And we know that P2 is Mb. For Mb, we have got W A square B upon L square. We have found the expressions for Mb and Rb. Now, let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 and find Ra. Ra and Rb are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. W is acting downwards, so that will be negative. Let us take these two terms on the other side, so they will come with the change of signs. From both of these, let us take W outside. For both of these terms, we can take LCM. 1 into L cube, we will get L cube. We can take L cube outside. We know that L is A plus B. So L cube is A plus B the whole cube. For A plus B the whole cube, we can use the formula A cube plus 3A square B plus 3AB square plus B cube. We can eliminate these two terms and we can eliminate these two terms. From these two terms, we can take b square outside. So for Ra, we are getting this expression. Now let us take movement about Ea and find the movement Ma. In this case, we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Mb is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Rb is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is L. The load W is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is A. Let us assume that Ma is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive. We can eliminate this L and here it will be L square. From these three terms, we can take WA outside. For these three terms, let us take LCM. Let us keep L square as the LCM. L square into minus 1, we will get minus L square. We can take L square outside. We know that L is A plus B. So for L square, we can apply A plus B the whole square. We know the formula for a plus b the whole square, a square plus 2ab plus b square, but there is negative sign. When we take the negative sign inside, all of them will be negative. We can eliminate these two terms and we can eliminate these two terms. We can take this term on the other side so that it will be positive. So for ma, we have got wab square upon l square. Now we are going to draw the shear force diagram for the shear force at just right of A and for the shear force at just left of C. We can calculate the shear force towards the right side. Here upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. For the shear force at just left of B and for the shear force at just right of C, let us go towards the left side. Upwards will be negative and downwards will be positive. Using the shear force values, we can make the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. For that, we have to combine the free moment diagram and the fixed moment diagram. You can see that I have combined both of the diagrams. Now we are going to find out the point of contraflexure. Point of contraflexure is the point where the bending moment changes its sign. Here there are two points. For AC there is one and for CB there is one. In AC let us make a section in the point of contraflexure at the distance of X from the point A. We know that at the distance of x, the moment will be 0. Using this condition, we can find out x. I am going to find out the moment at the distance of x from the point A. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. Ma is acting in the anticlockwise direction. 
so it will be negative or a is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is x then let us take this term on the right side so it will become positive then let us take this term on the right side it will come inversely then we can eliminate w b square and then l square and cube finally we have made a formula for the distance of x a l upon 3 a plus b for a c we have found the distance of point of contraflexure now let us find the distance of contraflexure for bc in the point of contraflexure let us make a section at a distance of x from the point b in this section we have to find the moment i am going to find out the moment from the point b in this case i am moving towards left hand side clockwise will be negative and anti clockwise will be positive mb is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be negative or a is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is x we know that in the distance of x the moment will be zero so mx will be zero let us take this term on the right side so it will be positive then let us take this term on the right side so it will come inversely then let us eliminate w a square also cube and l square finally we are getting x is equal to b l upon a plus 3 b we have made the formulas for the distance of point of contraflexures on both of the sides